Hi all, I have another amazing game to show you from the Chess Olympiad. Fabiano Caruana playing against Boris Gelfand, so in the USA versus Israel match. Let's have a look. E4 from Fabiano. C5, Boris plays the Sicilian defence. Knight F3, Knight C6. We have Bishop B5. So I used to call this the anti Sveshnikov system. Bishop B5, it's more positional in nature. G6, and without waiting, White just doubles the pawns here. This is a well-trodden path. D takes, you might think that's a bit unusual, but it helps control D4. It's a very popular continuation. D3, Bishop G7. H3, to avoid any annoying pins, perhaps, in the future. Knight F6, Knight C3. Both sides now castle. Knight E8. And now we have bishop e3, b6. And here, white plays e5. Quite often, white permits black to have e5 himself or herself with queen d2. For example, this variation has been seen before, but uh, it's not that fantastic for white sometimes. It's a very positional battle. And if black clamps down on white playing f4 in particular, then sometimes it's an interesting plan to be able to take and then play f4 and put pressure on e5. But yeah, this, this line seems popular with g5 here. This doesn't seem to offer too much for white. So Fabiano, he bypasses that with this e5. So it's an interesting move, e5, a bit rarer. f6, this has been seen before. Rook e1, knight c7. Uh, now here we have queen d2. On e takes f6 instead of queen d2, this position, black can play e takes, and then even g5, because black has that bishop without a counterpart. Although it's weakening the light squares in theory, black's well positioned here with that bishop to cover the weaknesses. For example, this situation. Uh, seems okay for black as an example this is an example continuation seems okay and uh, black actually did well in a stem game uh, from this position in 2007 McCurchin against Yushina so yeah Queen d2 was played rather than e takes f6 uh, so f takes e5 now was played here, actually, again, um, black can actually try and make use of that trump card bishop, the bishop without a counterpart, with the less committal, well, in a way, a less committal move. Uh, G5, you might not see it like that, but the light squares don't seem to be that bad, uh, you know, for, for black to patch up with the bishop. An example, rook ad1, knight d5, this situation seems plausible seems about even technical from a technical perspective however this wasn't played this f takes e5 was played so in a way this might actually be less solid because white is well positioned now to target that defensive bishop and try and win e5 however black has a specific idea here in this position to play rook takes f3 an exchange sacrifice But it doesn't have to be accepted here. Uh, if black doesn't play rook takes f3, say knight d5, then this is just horrible after bishop takes and knight takes e5. White can get a very dominant position by playing for d4 here, trying to break open this diagonal. And it just looks entirely unpleasant pretty soon, as an example continuation. Uh, white will dominate the position. The bishop is a problem piece as well. Here, so yeah, but the exchange sack here doesn't have to be accepted with g takes. If that's the case, then bishop f6 kind of justifies black's concept, and there might be things like knight e6 to f4 later, as well as h3 hanging here. So, for example, king g2 to protect h3, knight e6. This scenario seems uh, even, at least even. This would be black's idea, but the exchange sacrifice is bypassed with bishop takes g7 instead. So interesting scenario here. King takes. 
and now it's taken actually the rook didn't want to go back so again black forces kind of the exchange sacrifice by playing king takes g7 if rook f7 though bishop takes e5 and it's white with the bishop without a counterpart this position is very nice for white it seems white well, can build up on the e file this is a problem bishop which is quite typical in this variation white well, it's got a nice advantage there so king takes g7 forcing white to take the exchange it's for a pawn and the king seems to have been uh, compromised however actually at this point uh, it's for two pawns but white gets the pawn back so now it's for a pawn four five six one two three four five six it's equal on pawns in fact pardon me for, no seven for three four five six seven let's count the double pawns so yeah it's for a pawn e6 we have now let's get back to the game story uh, rook g5 the rook parks on g3 here very comfortably and it offers white it seems the g and h files actually offer white some attacking prospects here the exchange up so not just the exchange up but the bishop's evicted the king seems cozy on g2 and this other one seems very dangerous now threatening rook takes h5 it's defended for a moment rook, rook h8 yeah so if knight d5 there's nothing special going on here after rook takes h5 it seems except black's getting crushed there so it's important to defend h5 knight e4 now this is a very powerful move sending the black queen potentially away from key defensive dark square diagonals and files and ranks well more ranks and diagonals so what does black do here does black accept the classic poison pawn queen takes b2 there's not too many choices here for black which are very good because queen e7 the queen steps powerfully to f4 here threatening things like queen e5 check and if e5 then there's just queen takes f5 so what actually does black do in this position if knight e8 the queen going to e5 is very powerful because of knight d6 now especially because of knight takes now threatened if queen f8 this just builds up the pressure on f5 black's really paralyzed here for example this scenario is crushing yeah it's just horrible scenarios on queen e7 uh, it's uh, so yeah uh, after queen f4 it's if bishop takes e4 check and if here queen f6 that neglects c7 so you can see this is a horrible scenario rook down and uh there's even more horrors in these variations if king h7 can you see what white plays here if i give you five seconds to pause the video test your tactics queen takes h5 check yeah and rook takes h5 these rooks aren't just pretty they're quite functional here delivering a checkmate um on this check if king h7 yeah then sorry we've seen that if king g8 then just queen takes exchange up g6 is weak this is just totally fantastic for white white well, can even keep the queens on to maximize the torture massive advantage for white so all these variations imply after knight e4 the queen is sent to siberia on a one-way ticket it seems rather than say queen e7 because queen f4 is so powerful on queen e7 so the queen in siberia with this pawn sack queen f4 now okay how can black possibly defend this in fact fabiano seems to have an even technically stronger move with queen g5 uh, so threatening queen e7 so say black plays this now c3 cutting that queen off and if say b5 knight d6 is strong the idea is knight d6 and f5 is a big problem so here for example this that's just crashing through absolutely massive advantage for white so queen g5 uh seems strong after c3 yeah uh, um this this is the most powerful continuation it seems the most uh, accurate if bishop takes e4 takes 
so the knight's blocking in the queen there. Check. And here rook takes h5 is crushing. Just mating. So yeah, these lines are really, really dangerous. But so queen g5 is already close to winning, it seems. Queen f4 is also very dangerous and powerful as played. Knight d5 hitting the queen. Queen d6, yes. The queen's going in on the rank, it seems, with the queen in Siberia here. E5 closes the queen off from that diagonal now. You might wonder why. The best move, it seems, if black's got any saving chances in this line, it's with h4, it seems. And white might do best here to play rook g4, offering the exchange. Uh, because, say, check, king g8, rook takes. This is clever to win the, pawn, uh, the rook back, but queen takes is an even position, it seems. There's nothing to worry about for black. So it seems h4 is a critical test of this whole line Karana has followed. So let's follow rook g4, which seems to be the strongest. So exchange sack, check, and ignoring this pawn is important. After check here. This is the line which seems to offer white an advantage. But uh, it's a bit involved. Yeah, white gets an advantage in the end game. Small edge. Actually, it does seem uh, very comfortable. Uh, on Brook takes, by the way, here, yeah, there's F4. <clears throat> yeah, where, where it ends up with a comfortable position, uh, with a small edge. But, yeah, it seems H4 was, was the move to play. It wasn't played. We have E5 instead. So this the Queen's in Siberia and can't get back. It is a one-way ticket now over there. We have rook h4. The e5 does have the perk, the benefit of playing for knight f4 check. But now rook h4 gives the idea that there might even be an exchange sack if knight f4 check. Other moves also. Um, let's say white did play just rook g1. Check. Rook f8. This is uh, strong actually. Even allowing a knight f4 check can lead to disaster, it seems. Yeah, with rook g1. Knight g5 immediately as an alternative. Queen d4, black's actually threatening knight f4 check to win the queen. Uh, so this position is a disaster because actually knight f4 check winning the queen now with a fork. So there are some pitfalls available for white not to fall into here. Uh, in this particular position. But it seems as though, uh, yeah, th there, are, there are ways around it. So rook h4 is played. Rook g1 is a strong alternative, it seems. So queen d4 now, threatening potentially things revolving around knight f4 and taking. We have king g1 avoiding any knight f4 check being check. If white plays c3, by the way, just to demonstrate check, queen takes. This is fantastic for black, no problems. Black will get everything wanted out of the position. So, king g1, uh, we have rook f8. This is starting to creak. Black's defensive resources are starting to creak with the white, inf white queen infiltration. Uh, just as an example here, without these knight f4 checks, just as a token move to show the power of white's position, c3 here, and then queen e7 check, and here we have rook takes h5, mating in all lines, or here, mate. So a very, very dangerous position where rook f8 was played. I think black's going past the capability of defending. Now rook takes h5. Was played bishop takes e4. Now, uh, this is a little bit tricky with the queen on that eyeing f2. So, if takes, that would be a mistake. Check, check, it would be more than a mistake. Black would be absolutely winning now, taking the f pawn. Taking with the d pawn, uh, this situation, white would still end up with it seems a small edge, but might have to uh, do something radical like sack the exchange. Uh, ends up with a small edge, but no, the strongest was played 
forcing matters with queen d7 keeping everything really forced queen d7 check now picking off this pawn check again so now the king's blocking f2 coordinating with the queen so now it's time to take on e4 we have knight f4 so hitting the queen but here Fabiana plays uh, a brilliant continuation absolutely brilliant continuation there's actually two really winning com combinations available he chooses one of them can you guess what white plays if I give you five seconds to pause the video white play fantastic tactical combination to get a mating net so five seconds to pause the video now starting from now okay rook f5 check yeah this is really crushing g takes was played queen takes king goes back rook g7 is all forcing moves and the game ended here because if Boris plays king d6 checkmate if king e8 then check here dragging the queen back for queen c6 check not queen e6 check by the way because of knight takes but queen c6 check and then mating there mm. and um here yeah we've seen that sorry uh here there's queen takes f8 checkmate so all king moves they don't do anything here to help black yeah king d6 fells queen d7 queen d8 fells queen f8 queen e8 sorry king e8 fells to queen c6 uh, c8 queen e8 queen c6 to recap there they all fell in this position by the way there was another checkmate it just shows how strong white's position here i mean it's it's gone now for black defensively there was also rook takes g6 it seems forcing checkmate after check check this is another way of uh, chat mating okay but let's go back to the final position of this game and um so after rook g7 check boris girlfriend resigned so another great game from fabiano he's playing some brilliant chess at the olympiad uh, he seems to be really enjoying the chess and scoring very well for the united states team so a formidable challenge to make this Colson later in the year or is he wearing himself out a bit Magnus is uh, kind of resting maybe and preparing against Fabiano watching these games as they evolve okay comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much